I'm on a call session three weeks ago. Um, phone rings, guy picks up. I said, hey, Mr. Johnson. And he goes, no, nah, not Mr. Johnson. And I went, all right, well, uh, looking for the owner of 127 Orchard Lane. Is, am I anywhere near the mark? And he goes, no, nah, you've totally missed the mark. And I said, okay, well, I'm bombing this call anyway. I'm a local real estate agent. You need a good realtor? And he goes, well, my wife and I have been thinking about buying a house. We're not sure if we qualify. And I said, you see, I'm not bombing the call. And he started laughing. If you can make them laugh during the phone call, you tear down so many barriers that they've erected in their brains, random people calling. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Road to 10,000 with uh, me as your host, Ricky Carruth. I've got my guy, Juan Carlos. Better Dici. All right, how'd I do? We're gonna get to episode 10, man, and you're not gonna get this right. One more time. Badenichi. See, no, no, I told you last time I said you roll the R's like a like a couple D's in a row, and that wasn't good enough for you. It's not Italian though. We gotta we gotta get that out there. Have you ever seen Shane? Have you ever seen a guy so Italian calls himself Latino agent, <laughs> has a Latino middle name and an Italian last name? Have you ever seen it in your life? No, no, no. Yes, never you have. You're life. looking at him right now. <laughs> I know, well, yeah, yeah. Other than him, no, nah, never. First time for everything, you know? <laughs> Dude, you're, you're going to be known as the most Italian Latino agent in the world. Own it. Listen. You're gonna have to change. You're gonna have to change your Instagram handle. I'm, that, that's honestly something I'm scared about. Two years down the line, someone calls me like, "You can't do this anymore. You got to go Italian now." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I Listen, I, I, are you are you the only Ricky Cruz out there? That have you checked that there's no doppelgangers? Anyone copying you? Dude, there there is like there are some like fake accounts out there trying to give people like Bitcoin advice or something. I can't track. <laughs> What does that dude do? Some, he's trying to do something with stocks or something or whatever. Yeah, there's like a, a Forex thing. trading thing. Yeah, there's a Ricky Carruth out there. And like I posted it on my story and then a bunch of my followers went there and like started messing with him and stuff. And it, it was so funny. Some of the screenshots about he was talking about like charging like 20, 20 and 25 percent commissions and stuff. <laughs> we're like, OK, this is the new norm right here. Wow. Honey, we're charging 25 percent commission. Oh, man. It was definitely a, a rip off Ricky, you know, but it had my picture uh -huh. and it said Ricky Carruth fan page and stuff. But there is a real Ricky Carruth. I think the Facebook page is like Ricky Carruth or something like that. And I wanted it like I wanted my URL. You know, mine's like Ricky dot dot nine or something like that. And no like, kidding. But what is he? What did he do? I, I didn't really do much. I mean, I tried to message the guy and then I pretty much left it at that. I wasn't too worried about it, but you know, whatever. So is he in real estate? No, no. He was like a young, <laughs> he was a younger, a younger kid. Uh, you know, who knows, man? Ho hopefully, hopefully. I mean, Shane, don't, 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 don't do not search this guy and start trying to recruit him, bro. <laughs> do not try to recruit this guy. We don't need to be Ricky. Funny. Imagine you just build up this whole entire brand for him and he just turns like 25 and he just takes <laughs> over. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Oh man, the legacy Jeez. of Ricky Carruth. I oh, got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Cool, man. Well, listen, uh, good to be here with you, fellas. Uh, I got Shane Noble in here with us. I uh, wanted to bring him on the show today. My guy that's found a lot of success uh, with my program and just an example of you know what it really takes to make it in the business and a hard worker and dependable and disciplined, right? Disciplined. So Shane, what's up, buddy? What's going on, Ricky? How you doing? Doing good. Doing good, man. Uh, and tell everybody where you're at and how long you've been selling. Yeah, I'm in Northeast North Carolina. Um, up here near the Virginia line, uh, right on the Albemarle Sound. Um, my anniversary date for getting my license is April 1, so I'm coming up on my first year in the business. Wait a minute, bro. Hold on a second. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I thought you'd been in the business for a while. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 12 months. April 1. Oh, my What's gosh. Not, Not I, even 12 I, months. I honestly mm -hmm. thought – this is what I thought. I don't know why I thought this. I honestly thought that you were an agent who had – been in the business for maybe a couple years and was kind of like floundering and, you know, and needed like a new spark. And then boom, you know, you found my coaching program and then boom, you kind of explode. So you were like brand new. Yeah. 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 I was brand new. Um, the uh, brokerage that I was with really didn't offer a lot as far as direction on how to generate leads other than get out there and meet people. Uh, so I fell into the trap of uh, Zillow and Opsity leads and, 
paying the money that 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 takes. I did um, three deals through those lead generation sources and figured that there wasn't enough money in the world to put up with what they were uh, putting out there. So I did a YouTube search. Hell, it was a stupid YouTube search. It was, how do you generate real estate leads? I mean, it was, that's as simple as it got. And you popped up. And um, I don't think I ever told you this before, but when I first watched one of your call videos, um, I laughed at, at the script for lack of a better word, because uh, like, like I just thought it was or uh, when I thought it was, I thought it was odd that you paused and waited for them to converse back with you. Like I was looking for this, uh, this sales pitch and I assumed just not knowing any better that, uh, you know, they pick up the phone and you would go right into selling them. And your approach was completely different than that. You, you said, Hey, how you doing? Is this John? And they'd say, yeah. And you say, all right, how you doing, John? My name's Ricky Carruth with, uh, at the time it was Remax with Remax. And are you enjoying this weather? And, and I thought it was strange how you would pause, like at each one of those points, you would stop and basically force them to get into a conversation with you. After about five minutes of watching you on that call session, I was I was sold. I shut down Zillow, shut down Obsidy and uh, started calling people. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. No, I never heard that story. I mean, like, like, did you laugh out? Was it one of those LOLs? Like you laughed out loud or one of those oh, yeah, MOLOLs yeah. or LMNLPs? Like what? <laughs> what kind of laugh was it exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was odd. I, yeah. It didn't come off like a sales pitch to me. It came off as you're calling to talk to somebody you already know. Yeah. Well, that's, you know? that's exactly what it's not a sales pitch. It's, it's, that's a, right. it's literally just to see what I can do to help people. You that's know, right. that's what I'm trying to just, you know, pound into the industry's head, you know, like use your, use your, career as a as a vehicle to service people and help other people that's how you're going to get a right. lot of business so don't, don't you think it's funny your first uh isn't that funny your first brokerage you know here's your training get out there and meet people <laughs> it's like dude, get out there and meet people dude it gets even worse than that i was talking to an agent the other day this lady was telling me that her brokerage which was a well-known brokerage I sat her down in a room with a computer and said, get on YouTube, because she had learned how to write contracts. They told her to get on YouTube, do a YouTube search for how to present, how, how to do a listing presentation. And she goes, okay, well, which one? Any of them. Like this brokerage didn't care. Just go on the internet, search a random listing presentation thing and take anybody's advice on it on YouTube. It just, it blows my mind how some of them are. Well, you know, it's crazy. So my, my first year in the business, I learned through YouTube. Uh, I worked at one of those big franchises who had all the training in the world. And right. I still found a way to go on YouTube and learn from there. And right. Ricky was one of the, I'd say fourth or fifth coaches I stumbled upon at the time. Mm -hmm. But before that, I, I had people that were doing uh, objection handling and cold right. calling and script and role playing. And I got to be honest, my, my company, even though they offered all the training they did, I got mm -hmm. more from YouTube than I did from just going into Absolutely. the office and learning from them. So right. I, I think we're going through a huge transition where even if you look at colleges and universities, everything's online nowadays. And yeah. if you could take that education and put it on the cloud or put it on YouTube, people are going to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So Shane, tell us where you are now, now that we understand and realize you're not even into your first year of the business. Give it, give us your stats and what have you, what have you accomplished so far? Give us the, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding, bro. Let me hear it. All right. So June 19th, I did my first call session. In my first call session, I got a listing appointment, which turned into a uh, listing for a home in a waterfront community, which turned into me working both sides of the deal, bringing the buyer to the transaction as well. Uh, just a random, he called, saw the sign and called me, wasn't represented. And I ended up getting both sides of the deal. Since June 19th, um, I have completed 18 transactions uh, off of cold calling. Um, I currently have 10 listings on my board with three pending uh, deals, two buyers and one, one that I'm representing the seller on. And uh, when I left my old brokerage and came over to the new one, my wife was still at the old brokerage. So I had transferred 10 of my listings that I had collected up to that point over to her and she worked them to completion. And I have uh, 16 people on my 30 to 90 day board. Wow. So you're, you're close. You've closed 18 transactions in basically your first eight months. Yeah. 
Wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. I thought I like, I like, you see why I, I you see how I didn't realize this was this dude's first year in the business. Like, just like where he was when he joined us was at a place that it was somebody that's been in the business for two or three years. So, how, okay. okay, okay. What, 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 what did you do your first year? Two deals? Four, I think, four or six. I, I think it was four. I, I did one my first year. Shane, just to give you some uh, averages, I think the average agent, if they still are in the industry 12 months from now, uh, I think they do one to two deals their first year. So you're, you're not even like 10Xing. You're like 20Xing the average agent. Like These are like abnormal numbers. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts. So how, and how many listings do you have right now? I have 10 listings right now. I 10 a, uh, listings, bro. 10, 10 listings in a low inventory market. Okay. Yeah. There's no listings anywhere. Nobody has listings. There aren't even listings on MLS. And this dude has 10 himself. Okay. Yeah. This is a low inventory market. Dude sitting on 10 listeroonies. Right? I got one this morning. I rounded out at 10. I woke up and ate breakfast and I got a listing. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I woke up, I drank some coffee, I ate some oatmeal and did some push-ups and I uh, got a listing. I mean, what? How, how, how do you like your coffee? Two milks, one listing. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's funny because um, the biggest dilemma with this listing is it's a couple that lives in Maryland, but it's a waterfront building lot that they have here in uh, North Carolina. It's a $200,000 lot. And uh, the biggest dilemma I had is it's an older couple and they operated by fax. And who has a fax machine anymore? I don't I don't have a hard line at my house. So I had to go on and download an app on on the computer just to be able to fax it to them and get the listing back via fax. So. Right. Right. You got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. You know, what's so crazy. We did that. We did. We pulled it up. Somebody pulled it up on a team call. It was like they said that like 30 percent of Americans don't have an email or something like that. Is that right? I, that's right. what I th Huh? Yeah, that can't be right. I mean, everybody no, has to have an email. No, let me Google it. <laughs> let me Google it while Juan asks you something. Hold on. OK, so, so Shane, so so you're cranking these listings out. Are you getting the majority of your business just strictly through cold calling or is there some other lead source that you're tapping into? Yeah, no, I do. I do all cold calling and it's all geo prospect and I don't do any FISBOs. I don't do any uh, anything else. Um, uh, I listened to what Ricky said in some of his videos when I was first kind of digging in. And uh, one of the nuggets of advice that he gave out was do one thing really well. So like I have no social media game at all. Uh, my website is the basic one that they gave me here at the brokerage. Um all I do is uh, get on Radex and make phone calls when I have the time. Of course, you know, any uh, anybody that calls because they saw my sign on the street or whatever, they go in the database as well. But, you know, for the most part, it's just it's just calling people and creating those relationships. No, but what I love is that you're just focused on that one thing and you've probably gained, you've probably gotten more experience in cold calling over the last eight months than some right. agents have in the last five or 10 years just doing this. So, uh, yeah, doubling down and being consistent on that one prospecting method, that's going right. to pay off huge. Well, it's funny. This morning I made, because I had the listing, and then I had about, I don't know, 30 or 45 minutes before we started this broadcast. So uh, I fired up the Red X and picked a neighborhood. It's a $200,000 price point neighborhood. I made 17 calls. I had five people pick the phone up. I got three emails and one lady that wanted my business card via So. Like I'm four out of five on people wanting more from me. Nice, nice. Ten percent of ten ten percent of Americans don't have email address. Wow. Ten percent of Americans don't use the internet. Wow. That's thirty million. That's, That's a lot. lot. That's thirty million people, right? Hmm. So I don't know. And they they <laughs> it's it says no, that uh it okay. says there's four point four point or there's four billion email users worldwide um you know so you know there, there's there's a there's an untapped market there for sure yeah shane let me let me ask you out of, out of all the people that uh that you're calling right um i'm uh -huh. assuming you didn't get results right away or how long did it take before you got your first listing just from calling 
first call session. No way. He said, first first call he said, he he said his first remember, he said his first call session, he got a listing appointment, turned into a listing, and he got both sides of it. First, first call session. First call so, session. So if you got results so fast, why do you think new agents are just so against just doing the work? I think new agents wants I think they want to lean on Facebook. They want to lean on Instagram and, and not saying that that isn't a, a means of getting leads, but it, it's a lot of new agents don't want to put in the work. They want to sit back and wait for the deals to come to them. They want to, you know, um, the, hell, everyone I speak with in my market will not cold call. They're terrified of it, you know? Um, well, furthermore, I don't know you why. know, well, for, well, furthermore, I think a better question could be, out of the people who do call, okay, out of the people that do call, mm -hmm. you know, where are they going wrong with, uh, you know, you producing results day one versus them producing results month six or whatever? Here we go. So I'm on a call session three weeks ago. Um, phone rings, guy picks up. I said, hey, Mr. Johnson. And he goes, no, nope, not Mr. Johnson. And I went, all right, well. Uh, looking for the owner of 127 Orchard Lane. Is Am I anywhere near the mark? And he goes, no, nah, you've totally missed the mark. And I said, okay, well, I'm bombing this call anyway. I'm a local real estate agent. You need a good realtor? And he goes, well, my wife and I have been thinking about buying a house. We're not sure if we qualify. And I said, you see, I'm not bombing the call. And he started laughing. I, I, I love getting people laughing. If you can make them laugh during the phone call, you tear down so many barriers that they've erected in their brain against random people calling them. So um, the gentleman, he was a uh, he was a truck driver. He gave me his wife's phone number, asked me to call her. I called her. I got her with my lender. My lender calls me 30 minutes later and says, hey, they're good for up to 400000 So I'm going Saturday with this couple. I showed them a new construction home over the weekend. Um, after seeing it's exactly what they want. It's a ghost listing. So the builder's going to have to build this home on another lot, but it's exactly what they want. Uh, we're standing out front talking about it. His wife starts crying and she's like, thank you so much for calling me. And I went, Stephanie, it, it was a wrong number. It, it was just, you know, luck <laughs> of the draw that I happened to call you. She goes, I don't care how it happened. Thank you for calling me. Yeah. Ricky has said on his cast or, or his, um, you know, videos, these people are waiting for you to call. They are. And if you can, I think where a lot of agents miss it is they're really rigid in their delivery and they don't just, they don't just have a conversation with people and they, maybe they go into it with expectations. If you go into it, not expecting anything, it's amazing how many things will just fall in your lap. I think you've hit it on the money, man. It's perspective. A lot of these agents uh, have the idea that they're bothering people, you know, but you're going into with the serving mentality. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it that way, it's terrible if you're not reaching out to them. Why? Because you could provide so much value to them in their life and they're just missing out by not knowing you. But you also have for to, me, it oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, for me, it comes down to just do your job. <laughs> Your job is to reach out to people in the community and see what you can do to help them buying and selling real estate. Why aren't we doing our job? It goes back to Shane saying they're leaning on Instagram and Facebook, wanting things to just come to them. Like social media should be used as a tool, like a hammer. You know, if you, if you see generic content on Instagram, what do you think? Lazy. Lazy. Yeah. Right. Lazy. Yep. Yeah. You see drip, you see drip campaigns of emails of, agents and and then right there in the inbox is three other ones that came in at the exact same time with the exact same subject saying the exact same cook trash cook shrimp at two face stuff you think lazy right that's not the, that's not who's gonna that's they're not gonna pick you as an agent because you sent the same email three other agents sent about what color to paint your walls in the fall are the top 10 buyer tips in the spring. Okay. <laughs> They're not going to pick you because of that stuff. They don't want to, they don't want to know what the national statistics are of housing. They want to know what their local statistics are, what really yep. means something to them. Um, and, uh, you just have to, uh, you have, like you say, you have to put work in, even if you're doing social media, that's great. DM people, uh, uh, like comment under people that are following you's post, engage, right? Wait, 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 Ricky. So you're, you're telling me posting Thanksgiving pie recipes is not going to get me listings? Dude, listen. <laughs> if I want to learn how to cook a pie, 
Okay. <laughs> I will Google. Because <laughs> I've been sending out weekly uh, pasta recipes and I, I, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> well, for you now, now, but hold on though. For you, it's different because that's more of a personal branding thing. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you're sending Italian recipes. You know what I mean? And but remember, if you, you do know? the ranchero, if you do the ranchero and eggs one though, that's gonna be a no go, man. As soon as they, as soon as they see your, as soon as they see your mug shot, they're gonna be like, this guy's a fake. It's so. over. But no, listen, I, I get where you're coming from. You, you could go pull up hashtag real estate on Instagram, and if you go through the ten first profiles you see, you're gonna see everything's the same. They're, it's like they all yeah. come from the same office, yeah. all creating the same content, right? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. It it it's it's a it's a it's a wild world out there, you know. Well, it's funny, uh, you know. Going back to your question though about what agents can do to have success, and I go back to comedy. If you can get your prospects to laugh during your conversation, it tears walls down. So I was on a call session probably two months ago, and I was forty-seven calls in. And I dropped, I don't know, 20 or so voicemails. And each day I put a personal voicemail in for that day. So I'll say, hey, happy Tuesday to you. I hope you're staying dry if it's raining. Um, this is Shane with EXP. Shoot me a call when you get a chance and I'll leave my number. Uh, but I always make sure to put something in it personal so they know that that voicemail was recorded that day. And hopefully they think I just left it on their machine rather than automatically dropping it. Anyway, um, I'm like 47 calls in and I look, my phone's lit up showing that there's a call coming back and, and I'm assuming from a voicemail that I dropped. So I switch over and I said, Hey, this is Shane. Thanks for calling me back. No idea who it is here. The lady on the other line, she goes, um, this must be a prank call. I don't know, no Shane. And she hangs the phone up. Well, I thought that was funny. Uh, uh, like that, that was comedy to me. I'm 47. I haven't prank called anybody since I was 12. So I immediately dialed her back. It was a hang up. I immediately dialed her back. Right. And it rings four or five times and then it goes to voicemail. I wait till her, her, her thing's done. And I'm still giggling as my recording starts. And I said, Hey, thank you for giving me a good laugh today. That was really funny. I haven't prank called anybody for, for 30 years. Um, but just in case you wanted to know, my name's Shane. I'm with eXp Realty. Would love to chat with you sometime. Give me a call. So I went back to my call session a couple minutes later. I look down, my phone's lit up again. She's calling me back. So now I've dropped a voicemail. She's called me and hung up on me. I've left her another voicemail. Now she's calling me back again. So I pick up the phone. I said, hey, thanks for calling me back again. This is Shane. And she goes, honey, you are funny. I said, well, thank you, ma'am. That's, you know, it, it, it just is what it is. We're out here, you know, trying to trying to make some money. And um, I'm, I'd love to meet, you know, people. And, you know, right now with COVID, we're not doing a lot of meeting. I said, but you live in a great neighborhood and there's no homes available. So I was just checking with you to see if you needed anything. She goes, I ain't selling my house. And we've entered this point where we're, it's almost like banner back and forth. And I said, I don't want you to sell your house. Matter of fact, if you told me you were selling your house, I don't think I'd come sell it for you. And she starts laughing again. She goes, but I really am not going to sell my house. I said, well, that's fine. One day down the road, you might want to sell your house. How about we stay in touch? And she goes, well, I got another house to sell. And I said, OK, well, tell me about that house. She goes, well, it's the next neighborhood over. I've been renting it, but I'm tired of renting it. And I said, do you think I want to sell it? Is this a house worthy of me selling? And she goes, well, I don't know. When can you come over and talk to me about it? And I said, well, when do you want me over? She goes, well, how far away are you? I said, 30 minutes. <laughs> like we're back and forth. It's hilarious. I've never met this woman. Right. I said, I'm like 30 minutes away. She goes, all right, well, I'll see you in 30 minutes. I said, you better be ready. And she goes, all right, I'll see you. I went over, got the listing, had it in MLS that day. Off of being funny, off of making a joke out of it, getting her out of her defensive, like she didn't know me, she hung up on me. But I created an environment that was comfortable for her, through humor. That's good, ma'am. That's good. Let's take it back 30 years though. Let's take it back right. 30 years to your prank calling days. How, how, get, <laughs> tell me how that, tell me how those calls go. It's been so long ago. I don't even remember. You don't even remember what the script is. Nah, you know? I'm sure it was something about is your refrigerator running. You need to go catch it or something like that. Who knows? Hello. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I, 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 I got to say, Shane, you have to be probably the smoothest realtor we've ever spoken to. Like you have a way with words. 
Really? Nah, nah. I've seen I've seen a few of them on there that 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 have made me stop and go, man, look at how they are. God. You but know, it's I awesome. strive to be as good as them one day. You're having a conversation. That's all it is. And people want to connect. And it is. for the people that are listening, like you have the script. Everyone wants to know, like, give me the script. Well, how do I learn what to say? They could retake, they could just take the last two minutes of what you just said and apply right. that to every single person they speak to and get listeners Everyone. left and right. Everyone. It really doesn't even come down to a script. It comes down to knowing to have them. It's almost like a roadmap to a conversation. And that roadmap has turns, which are the transitions. And you you have to hit your transitions with some force so that the conversation continues. Because if the conversation stalls, you only have five seconds to grab these people on the phone. If you don't grab them in the first five seconds, all of my calls are done just like this. I'm standing up, I'm moving around, high energy. Like you have to grab them in the first five seconds or you'll lose them. Yeah, hundred percent, man. hundred percent people, the first couple seconds, they're going to judge you right then and there, because a lot of people on the calls, what they do is, is they, they kind of like agents assume, um, you know, like if somebody calls, they're in a bad mood, they hang up on you, let's say, or they say, Oh, I'm at work. I'm busy. What can I do for you? And they start to turn, it starts to turn the wrong direction. You know, mm -hmm. agents, agents don't understand that that person had the time to answer the phone, right? right? If they didn't want to talk or they were too busy, they could have just not answered the unknown number. Yeah. But they exactly. answered the phone. You so, had a which chance. means which means what? Right? They're, they want to see, right? So they gave you an opportunity to to wow them for about right. 1.7 seconds and you blew it. And you think it's them. You think that they're mad that they're just unhappy or mean people and really they gave you the opportunity, but you don't realize that it's you that, that, that made that call go south, not them, right? right? It's up to you to do this enough to get the experience to learn how to wow them with your tone within the first 1.7 seconds. And then from there, you can actually build a, build a conversation, but you got to really it. break through to them. Yep. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. That's good stuff. I used to do the same thing um people would call i would call people and they say oh no we're gonna keep the bill we're gonna keep this property forever and i say okay you're gonna keep it till the building crumbles and and some of them would just laugh and laugh and i i, I had a whole list of like little jokes that i used mm -hmm. to tell um you know like in my head uh back when i used to really you know get on the phones that first go around that first go around when i wasn't even trying to build relationships i was just trying to do deals right. <laughs> the market was right. the market doubled in two years and i was mm -hmm. just pounding the phones not trying to get emails not trying to do anything but sell a piece of property uh, <laughs> like I, the we, we had these things called phone call festivals we had phone call festivals where mm -hmm. it would be like three or four of us we'd get in a room in this office and we just make phone calls for like two or three hours we would all have our list and we'd all just go to town. Those days were so fun, but there was no dialers, right? There was no auto dialers. We we're literally dialing by hand and uh, we would laugh and laugh because we, we, it was almost like we were prank calling at that time because right. we, were, we were like 21, you know, right. everything was funny at the time. You know, <laughs> we were, we were little pranksters at the time and, you know, it was fun. But when you take it back to those days and you, when you can be that comfortable, that's why I tell yeah. people, I'm like, I'm like, you know, pretend like you're prank calling people. I literally, that's yeah. some of my, that's my advice. A lot of times to people yeah. who are scared to make calls. I'm like, well, number one, you're not trying to sell them anything. You're just talking to see if you, if there's something you can do to help them. You're talking to them like family. I said, have fun with it. Yeah. I said, listen, call somebody up. And when they answer, go, hello. All right. Yep. Just do it one time and see how you feel afterwards. You're going to feel exhilarating. It's going to be an amazing experience, and you're just going to want to keep on making calls. You're going to feel more confident. You know, it's like, who cares if the call doesn't go good? You have 7.4 million other people to call. Right. <laughs> you're never going to get to the end of that list. Right, exactly. No, I, 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 I love the concept. It's just plain and simple. Don't take it too seriously. That's all it is. Exactly. Do the work. Don't think it over twice. Be consistent. How many hours a week? Uh, how many hours a week do you think you're, you're calling, Shane? Uh, probably four, five. It's about an hour a day, a right? Week. Yeah. You have a certain time you do it, and you do it in the morning. You do it when you have 
Whenever I have time. On. Yeah, yeah, whenever I have time. I was on a call uh, back over the summer, um, waterfront community. I hit a guy with, uh, hey, is there anything in the world I can do for you? You know, after getting to the first part of the conversation, he goes, yeah, bring me a box of money, and he hangs up. So the next day, I went by the dollar store. I bought a little cardboard box. I put $5 worth of play money in it and taped my card to the top of it, wrote on top of the box as requested and went and left it on his front porch. I didn't ring the doorbell, didn't anything, right? And uh, he called me two days later and said, I've been laughing about that for two days. And I said, well, thank you. He says, uh, my daughter's moving here from Florida in a couple of weeks. Can you show her some homes? Maybe maybe find her something to buy. And I said, I'd love to. So I ended up getting a buyer's lead out of a hang on. But it's just getting creative, you know. If they leave the door open, you gotta you gotta find a way to jump through it. You're making me think of every single time someone hung up on me. That was a potential lead I could have converted. That's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and not yeah. everyone. I mean, I get hung up on all the time, but uh, it, 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 people have bad days. It's not a reflection on anything that you're doing. So you know, just don't take it personally and keep it moving. Yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So, so changing subjects a little bit, okay. um, kind of moving over to the hot topic here lately on the Zillow thing. Did you see that, uh, Juan? Did you see the article that um, KW or Inman put out with KW? Kind of, uh, you know, Gary Keller kind of said a little fighting words towards Zillow on this whole thing. Really? No. No, it wasn't like anything too crazy. Um, wasn't anything too crazy here. I'll share it right here. <clears throat> see, can you see that? Yes, sir. All right, mm -hmm. let's up. Now he just said that uh, you know, they had their little um their uh whatever you call it, their family reunion. Um and uh basically um basically they were saying that the uh that they felt like Zillow's like they felt like that this was kind of a the acquisition of showing time was a way for the company to take more real estate agents commission dollars, right. Um, to, to squeeze down on agents a little more. And basically, you know, they said that um, they said that the uh, basically the, the way that you combat this, I guess, um, where was it? The way that you combat, you know, what they're, you know, you know, what everybody fears about this is to own your own leads, you know? And like, I, I just did a video, it's not out yet, but I'm like, look guys, if you're worried about Zillow, if you're worried about, uh, you know, this, then, then why are you still buying Zillow leads? Right. right. Why are you still using dot loop that they own? And why will you continue? Why will you not send a letter to your board saying, please quit using showing time? Yeah, all you got to do is quit using all the stuff that they that they yeah. have. Make but it basically, unprofitable. What's that? Make it unprofitable. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, I mean, it's it's the Trojan horse of the history of real estate. You know, <laughs> but but basically, they they basically what they're saying is is you know if you own your own leads, you don't have anything to worry about. That's what KW said. They said if you own your own leads, you don't have anything to worry about. Um, you know, they, they said that their command, their CRM tool, uh, the lot cost per lead in 2020 was just under $2, far below the $12 average, generating 2.7 million leads. Um, but, but at the end of the day, what they said was, yes, we do believe this is a squeeze on agents' income. And the way to protect ourselves from it is to own, own your leads. You know, so anyway, I thought that was really interesting. Um, let, let, let me ask you, Ricky, I'm, I'm kind of curious what you think. What's your definition of a lead? Cause everyone's always talking about leads, leads, leads. I, I think the whole realtor community is addicted to leads. How would you define a lead? Dude, a lead is literally the definition of an elite is a human in your market, right? A human, like a human being, you know, warm blood flowing through in your market. That's it. A, a relationship pretty much, right? Well, not even a relationship. Right. Not even a relationship because that, that, you know, the lead turns into a relationship. The lead turns into a prospect that's converted into a relationship. Once you have the conversation and find the comfortable comfortability and to find if there's a working relationship to be had, you know, I mean, some humans, 
some human in our markets have mothers that are real estate agents, you know, or best friends from high school that are real estate agents. But, you know, that, you know, those don't turn into, you know, I mean, hey, uh, I, you know, I want to create a relationship with you. See, here's the here's where here's where people really lose on the whole relationships over transaction thing. They start to use it in a way that they try to make themselves look like they're for people. And so they're like, oh, building relationships, but they're really only building relationships if the person they're building a relationship with can benefit their business, right? And, you- and not only benefit their business, but benefit them in the next 90 days. I think what you said is on the money where people are confused with what a lead is, which is just a basic human being in their market versus a prospect who's a human being they built a relationship with that's ready to buy or sell in the next 90 days. I think everyone's addicted to prospects. However, they keep identifying them as leads. And that's why they get disappointed when there's a human being that doesn't want to sell for two years. But who knows? They can refer you to their mother, their aunt, their cousin, their colleague over the next six months. Dude, it's listen long-term to me. thinking. Right. It's not even long-term thinking. See, that well, right short-term there. Term thinking, short-term thinking for them. Yeah. See that? Yeah. See, that's well, no, no, no. For us too. See that, 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 see that right there is one thing I hear so much, you know, Ricky, your strategy is so long-term. Well, why does Shane have 18 closings in his first year? Why does William Patrick why is he have converting seven? one person on his first session? Yeah, right. He eats mm-hmm. listings for breakfast. Why does, why does William Patrick have six closings and seven pending deals and 12 listings in a low inventory market? Is that short-term? You know what I mean? There's, I could tell you story after story after story of people who get deals Look at Quintavious. Look yeah. at Quintavious. A hundred deals in his first year, circle prospecting. 85% of his business that first year was just calling 200 people a day on Red X. The other 15 deals, there was 85 deals, circle prospecting. 15 came from meeting people at Kroger, right? He, he made it a point to meet 50 people in public once a week, uh, or not once a week, but 50 people a week at a grocery store. Um, which you really can't do nowadays with COVID and stuff. I can't wait for this to be over. Yeah. Like, I can't wait. Like, I, I, it, 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 like, do we see the light at the end of the tunnel? Like, is it happening? It has to be happening. There's been drops in cases, vaccines out there. I'm ready yes. to get back on the road and do some events, man. I'm dying yeah. over here. Yeah, I am so, my body is like clammed up. I'm like, you know, I'm just feeling all stiff. I'm ready to get out there and get on a plane and, come see some people. Right. It's crazy, but you know, every interaction that you have in the public can, can very easily turn into another, another deal. I mean, it's, it's everywhere I go, I get into conversations with people at the gas station, the person, the next pump over that's pumping their gas. You know, we talk about the weather, we talk about whatever. And I always, I always lead in with, what do you do for a living? Which in turn, they'll answer and then ask what I do which is a good segue into giving them my card. Hey, if you ever need something, you know, hang on to this. I love it. I love that strategy, man. I love the strategy of just like conversation that Mm -hmm. naturally, like you have, when you're a good conversationalist and you communicate well with people, you know, like, and you lead in with that. And Mm -hmm. then it kind of segues into, I'm here to help you. If you need something, this is what I do for a living. Here's my card or whether it's by phone or email or anything. It's like, cause you, you've drawn them in with the conversation itself. Cause you're a great conversationalist, yep. you know, and now they're involved in this conversation and they're emotionally invested in this conversation now, you yep. know? And then when you do bring up the fact that you're an agent or something, you've already, they've already shown you that, that, that you guys, you know, can talk Have and clicked in know, a manner. Yeah. 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 You, you, you've already proved that you guys like each other, you know, on mm-hmm. a certain level. And then it's just so easy to segue that into this is what I do for a living or is there something I could do to help you? And then at that point, you're not even trying to like shove it down their throat or sell them on anything. You're just like, mm-hmm. I'm here if you need something. And then they're like, oh, well, I'm looking to do this or that. It just makes sales so much easier when you don't try to sell. And people want to help you. Once you connect with them, like people actually go out of their way to send you business. And it's because mm-hmm. you didn't, you didn't leave with business first. You built those relationships and, and emotions from day one. Yeah. Right. Well, cool, man. It was a really good conversation here. Shane, where can they follow you, man? I think follow me on Shane Noblin Realtor uh, on Facebook. And then my name, Shane Noblin on Instagram. Nice, nice. And 
in one. Are you still Latino still agent? Latino or agent for now till, till Instagram reaches out to me. <laughs> got you. <laughs> got you. Got you. Got you. I, I, I know it's all these Ricky fake accounts just reporting me every single day. <laughs> all, you, all you have to do is make sure it's the one with the blue check and you're good. Right? There you go. So yeah. The blue check <laughs> guys. I right. uh, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Uh, give us a five-star review on iTunes and click subscribe, like the, like the video comment below. Let us know what you thought. And if you want us to continue doing these shows and we're just trying to put as much content out there as we can to help you guys grow your business. We're always here to help reach out to me, Juan, Shane, anytime if there's something we can do for you. And, oh, uh, Ricky, we, we, we forgot. We have to give everyone a little update on our count. Okay, the, where were we Monday? Where were we Monday? Monday, we were at 585. As of this morning, we're, I think we're peaking at 590. So we've actually brought on five people in two days. So nice. rocking and rolling. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, look, I'm looking for this thing to hit 1,000 in about three or four months. And then be around the 4,000 mark, you know, mid next year, you know? So yeah. And when it, once it, once it catches fire, it's going to go, it's going to go quick. So. Oh yeah. Ex excited mm -hmm. to be here grinding with you fellas. Nice. It's good talking to you. We'll see you guys on the next Likewise, episode. Shane. All right guys. Peace. See you, man.